Local for more on the crisis in Syria, I'm joined now by Kate Gould, Legislative Associate for Middle East Policy at the FCNL. Thank you so much for joining me. Great to now, be here. Now, um, this Amnesty International report, it says that abductions, torture, killings, Sharia courts, secret prisons with inhumane conditions are just some of the things that are going on, and they're all coming back to that Al-Qaeda-linked jihadist group in Syria. Um, so what do you make of this? Why aren't we seeing more coverage of it? Good point. Yes. Well, this report certainly highlights in stark relief the gross human rights abuses, many of which are war crimes that have been perpetrated by one of the most powerful armed opposition groups in Syria, known as ISIS or the Islamic State of Iraq and al-Sham. And so it, it really underscores the urgency for the international community to end the military assistance to all of the actors in this conflict, which are, have all perpetrated these human rights abuses and worked toward a negotiated solution. But unfortunately, it's not getting the attention it deserves. So how does this report reflect on the situation that is currently going on in the country? It shows that it's getting worse every day. The United Nations has warned this is the most grave threat to peace and security since World War II. So we're seeing it just get every worse day by day. It's clearly, it's time for the international community to stop all military assistance to all the different actors in this conflict and, and work for the Geneva II talks, make sure that those are a success and that we get an immediate ceasefire and end the conflict. Now, as I mentioned, this report details torture and flogging and abductions and murders. Um, obviously, there's a lot of accusations going around um, on both sides. Is this just the ugly face of war? Is this what the reality of war is? Well, clearly there are human rights abuses being perpetrated on, on all sides, and that is why it, it has to end. This is not inevitable. You know, seemingly intractable conflicts in Lebanon and Northern Ireland and South Africa, they ended when there was the resolve to do so. And we saw that there was the resolve to eradicate a, a serious chemical weapons arsenal, um, and we're seeing great progress. We're seeing a rare moment of cooperation between the United States and Russia. Uh, we're seeing a resolve through um, cooperation um, at the UN Security Council. And that's, that happened when it came to chemical weapons. The same kind of urgency and the same kind of spirit of cooperation is what we need in the case of ending the conflict once and for all. Now, I want to take a moment to kind of focus on what's going on with these rebel groups. Obviously, there's a lot of loose affiliations with one another. There are reports that extremists and jihadists are bringing their fights into Syria. So what should we make of this rebel group at the moment, given all the fractions and friction within the rebel group? Unfortunately, some of these extremist groups are among the most organized and most powerful armed groups. So groups like ISIS, groups like the al-Nusra Front, these are the groups that are, are uh, organized. They have the largest military presence on the ground. And they're also the groups in the best position to seize the weapons that the United States, that Turkey, that other countries have been sending to the armed opposition groups. Um, they, yes, there is so much, uh, so many factions, they're estimated to be more than a thousand different armed opposition groups, but, but these are the groups that have, um, some, the most extreme groups that have perpetrated these barbaric acts have been the most powerful, the most organized, and, and the more that these weapons are sent, the, the more that these um, groups are emboldened to become stronger and more extreme. It's hard to determine, you know, everyone wants to know who's the good guys and the bad guys. In the fog of war back in World War II, obviously, you know, we, we like to say that there was distinct good guys and bad guys, but when we have wars these days, it's really hard to, to point out those exact distinctions, right? Yes, this is a civil war. So there are clearly, you, you see gross human rights abuses happening on all sides. And there, um, that, however, it's important to keep in mind that the majority of Syrians are not involved in this, these armed hostilities, that they're not taking up guns and, and they want to see a peaceful resolution to this conflict. So, so when you're looking for good guys, when you're looking for, um, for actual, uh, the, the, the actors who are going to play a constructive role, you can look at Syrian civil society organizing women's groups, all kinds of different groups organizing for a nonviolent solution to this brutal crisis. And we have less than a minute left, but we are entering, uh, just about to enter the third war of this cri uh, the third year of this crisis. How much longer can this war realistically go on before it tips over the entire region into chaos? 
It depends on the international community. If, if there is resolve and if there is a, um, a determination to see that this, this conflict end, then it can end. And, and it will require getting buy-in from all the different actors at the table inside of Syria and the external uh, actors. And, and we will see a, a major opportunity to end this conflict on January 2nd when the Geneva II talks commence. And what about uh, Christians in Syria? There are reports that uh that um, on the atrocities are going on against um, religious minorities. Yes, there are. And I've actually heard from some colleagues who've been on the ground with some of these religious groups. They've said that despite all the sectarian violence, there are still um, some, some incredible displays of interfaith cooperation. So we see when um, Muslims, uh, when, when there were some extremist groups that attacked a, uh, a Christian church, then the, um, the mosques would, would um, use their minaret to call uh, Christian services together. And the Christian services, when, when the minaret um, could not work because of the electricity electricity was cut off, then Christian groups, uh, true Christian churches would ring their bells. And so still that, that is happening, but unfortunately it's rapidly, um, it's, it's rapidly unraveling as we see this conflict persist. Thank you so much for joining me. Kate Gould, Legislative Associate at the Middle East Policy at the FCNL.